In today's episode, we're going to start things off first by discussing the exciting Starship developments happening in South Texas. You guys don't want to miss this. I am so seriously. We'll also check in on Crew Dragon and talk my favorite subject, parachutes, baby. We'll go over changes to the SpaceX launch manifest and finish with today's honorable mention. I am The Kev, and this is SpaceX in the News. All right, today we're going to start with Cocoa, Florida. I know, right? Crazy. Seymour Holdings did another flyover with his drone again, providing us with overwatch of the East Coast SpaceX Starship facility, or practically former facility, I guess you could say. Still not a whole lot happening with Mark II as it awaits the scrapyard, but John did spot the Just Read the Instructions Octagrabber on site, and apparently it's almost complete. Its drone ship has been on the Florida coast undergoing upgrades these past several months. The Octagrabber is an autonomous robot that will be used to secure boosters to the deck of the ship after successful landings. Another ship of the SpaceX fleet, Go Discovery, made its third trip from Florida to Boca Chica to deliver more Starship goods. This time it was two test stands that were immediately transported to the launch site upon arrival, where they now live together in harmony happily ever after. The test stand that tried to secure SN1 to the Earth has received its refurbishment, and now three hydraulic battering rams were installed to simulate Raptor thrust for SN3's upcoming pressure test. And speaking of which, the big Starship news for the week belongs to SN3 by far. It's progressing at a ridiculous speed, and it appears that all major components, save for the fins, are all on site and ready for stacking, which is currently underway in the high bay. A couple nights ago, Elon tweeted some pictures of the bottom half of SN3 getting stacked, specifically the propellant tanks in the engine mount section. But stand by because more stacking is coming. In fact, SpaceX is about to transport what they have completed down Highway 4 to the test stand we mentioned earlier. Once it arrives, we can expect it to be pressure tested, but when exactly that is, we can only speculate. But it could very well be this weekend. But even more exciting than that is that a steely-eyed missile man on nasaspaceflight.com, Starscale, found an FAA permit that seems to indicate a static fire date is also imminent for SN3, as well as a 150 meter hop. Yeah. And the way I read this, and, and keep in mind the lawyer wife claims I can't read anything correctly, the paperwork falls under the permission granted for last year's Starhopper permit since it doesn't expire until June. So as long as Starship doesn't hop higher than 150, I guess they're good. But the best part is, is that these dates are backed up on the Cameron County website. So I think it's safe to expect that the static fire will be on April 1st and the 150 meter hop on April 6th. Both of those dates are primary dates and match what was posted online. However, maybe it's just a terrible April Fool's joke, <laughs> I don't know, but it's likely these events could slip anyway. And in the midst of this awesome SN3 news, don't forget that SN4 is expected to be the Starship to make even larger flights, which by the way is already well underway in the construction yard. You know, the future is exciting, but gee golly gosh, the present is pretty epic. We do have some local news concerning the locals. Maria and Ray officially turned over their keys to SpaceX this week, which means Lab Padre's cameras had to be removed from the property. SpaceX was gracious enough to give them a hand with that, but don't fret, Lab got their new cam up just a couple days later at their new nearby site that they've been working on these past several weeks. You can check out the new view over on their channel, right meow. And don't say your goodbye to the pointers either, they did find a new place within viewing distance of Starship, so it's a happy new beginning all around. But how long will the progress that SpaceX has been making last, you know, with the world issue that's going on right now? Cameron County is now under a mandatory shelter-in-place ruling, and so is McGregor, Texas, where SpaceX tests their rocket engines. Welcome to the club, guys. However, SpaceX is allowed to remain open and active for the time being, so in the short term, it looks like we shouldn't expect much change of pace, at least with local production. We'll see how long it lasts. Two SpaceX employees located elsewhere have tested positive this week and have been quarantined. NASA does have a response framework in place that lays out different DEF CON levels, if you will, to work under. And as far as launches go, or no-go, if it gets bad enough, commercial launches will be the first to get suspended. Then non-essential government missions would be next to no-go, followed lastly by only national security and interplanetary missions, so long as they don't pose a serious threat to people's lives. This hasn't affected SpaceX's launch manifest yet, but travel restrictions have. The Argentinian Space Agency has indefinitely delayed the Falcon 9 launch of Sawakam 1B because of their country's flight restrictions in place at this time. The launch was scheduled for this coming Monday. However, the 45th Wing Commander, Brigadier General Doug Scheiss, does not expect any other manifest changes at this time. The next Falcon flight could very well be Starlink 6. And since SpaceX is producing more SAS than they can launch, maybe they'll push up the timeline. You know, now that an opening is available, here's the wishful thinking. 
a huge SpaceX launch that has yet to be affected by the microbiology going around is Demo 2, still expected to go in mid-May. But other issues do seem to be trying their best to plague the mission before it even gets off the ground. After last week's engine out issue during the Starlink launch, NASA released the following statement that according to their contracts with SpaceX, they are required to make available all data and resulting reports of the issue. Then with NASA's agreement, implement any corrections needed prior to Demo 2. Of course, this issue happened because this particular booster was making its fifth flight, the first booster to do so, and crewed flights require completely new boosters. So here's to hoping this gets worked out relatively painlessly. But there was also a snafu with Crew Dragon's parachute testing this week. During what was expected to be one of the last drop tests for Crew Dragon's Mark III parachutes, the testbed capsule became unstable under the helicopter lifting it, and so the pilot made the emergency decision to cut it away. This was, of course, before the parachutes were armed, so they were never deployed and thus never tested. So although the fake capsule smashed into the ground at terminal velocity, it wasn't a failed test. I'm sure SpaceX will take a mulligan on that one. Still, seems like a waste of some perfectly good shoots, brah. <sighs> Parachutes. NASA has selected SpaceX as the first US commercial provider to deliver cargo to the Gateway in lunar orbit. This, of course, falls under the Artemis program that will land humans back on the moon to stay by 2024. This news comes one week after NASA's head of human spaceflight directorate, Doug Lavero, announced the Gateway Lunar Space Station was no longer part of the Artemis plan because it would keep NASA from making their deadline of 2024. Lavero replaced Bill Gerstenmaier last year because things were moving too slow. But check this out. If you zoom in on this caption here in NASA's article, you'll see something quite fascinating. This is an illustration of the SpaceX Dragon Extra Large. Scandalous. It would reach the Lunar Gateway by launching upon a Falcon Heavy. Michael Baylor did us a solid and listed the current Falcon Heavy manifest. Did I already say the future would be exciting? And now it's time for today's honorable mention. Yesterday, ULA launched an Atlas V rocket with the first ever Space Force payload on board, a military communications satellite. And liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket with AEHF-6 on the first mission for the United States Space Force. And after about an hour delay due to ground hydraulic issues, the rocket used its asymmetrically placed SRBs to hastily go to space, where after about five hours of several burns and long periods of coasting, placed the payload in its intended orbit. Flawless victory. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. The making of these episodes are possible because of the generosity of our eccentric members. If you would also like to support this channel's content, you can check out the links in the description below. For just a few bucks a month, you can have access to more eccentric content, including our midweek previews, where I go into greater depth and share my opinion on the week's current events. But you know what's free? Subscribing and hitting that like button. Do it. Do it. Thank you all so much for tuning in, and until the next one, Godspeed.